Hello everyone. Uh, today's video is about uh, the manufacturing uh, account when in which you calculate cost of production. So uh, one thing in accounting that is very important is that till the manufacturing accounts, um, the students are familiar with only trading businesses or service businesses. Okay, so uh, in the income statement of the sole trader, we make a, an income statement for a trading business in which. Uh, you're buying output from somewhere else and you're not adding any value. You're not making it yourself You're just promoting it. You're just mark doing the marketing and selling that product in your own market. So um, That is basically trading and then uh, What is the service business? So in the service business there there can be um, let's say a clinic uh, a doctor's clinic or let's say a tuition center. It's also a service business, but um, uh, manufacturing uh, it manufacturing account in the manufacturing account basically you need to make the product yourself and then you are basically going to sell it so uh, the whole process of production is undertaken by the business and uh, this is very important here that you need obviously when you are making the product yourself you need a lot of raw materials and you know you need to uh, get the process done from someone as uh, someone else as well so if you uh, imagine a factory where uh, dresses are being produced uh, it's like a cloth clothing manufacturer so in that case uh, you need what well, the first thing that comes to your mind is the raw material that is cloth and then there are buttons there's thread and then you need to um, ask some uh, labor to you know stitch it uh, so that in that case you you might pay that labor per piece so um, so in, in every case scenario where we are considering a factory or a manufacturing business, there will be a different raw material type. So let's say it's a furniture business, so wood, be the, wood will be the raw material. So uh, then there are three types of inventory that is very important. One is raw material, the other is work in progress, the third one is finished goods. Raw material is basically the basic raw materials that need to be uh, put into the process of production in order to uh, make finished goods. Uh, work in progress is th that inventory which uh, is incomplete and uh, basically you need to complete it to in order to sell it. Finished goods is that inventory which is uh, complete and it is ready to be sold. So moving on to the format of the manufacturing account. So here I haven't put a date here because obviously you guys know that uh, every question has a financial year and financial year for every business is different. So they will give you the date in the question so you guys can put that. Of course, and uh, these headings are already made in the CIE exams. So you don't have to worry about that. So what we move on to is the manufacturing account. So one thing that you guys should know this is that all the factory related costs will come in the manufacturing account. Uh, any office related costs or selling expenses or administration expenses will not come in the manufacturing account. That goes to the income statement, the expenses section of the income statement. So if you, uh, one very important formula here is that you need to first um, put all the direct costs in the manufacturing so number one is direct material the second one is direct labor and the third one is direct expenses so basically you need these three uh, and then basically when you add these you get prime cost so this is an important formula prime cost is an addition of all uh, direct costs so uh, one thing you guys should know that direct costs are those costs that are traceable to one unit Tra by tra by saying traceable to one unit i mean that um, if you look at that particular product that uh, the finished good that has been made uh, the pro the producer would know that okay how much material has been put in this product uh, then how much uh, let's say how much uh, cloth is put in this product if it's a dress how much how many buttons are there how much thread has been used how much have we paid to the labor in order to stitch this so um, uh, all of this basically is directly traceable to one unit so when uh, when one unit is produced you can just uh, calculate the direct costs uh, by looking at the unit and you know of course the one who has done the production would know that uh, what the direct costs were were in that production but there are certain indirect costs as well in the factory 
so we'll be discussing that in a while but uh, direct costs are basically also known as uh, if you guys are also business studies and economic students they are variable costs basically variable costs so the more the output you produce the more direct the costs you need to pay the less the output you produce the less direct costs you need to pay so variable costs basically keep on changing with the level of production uh, so here they are saying okay first thing is the first setting would be cost of raw materials used so this is a very very uh, easy formula uh, if you guys know the cost of sales formula this is the same as cost of sales formula but in that you did not have inventory of raw material here you have inventory of raw material you per add purchase of raw material so opening inventory of raw material is raw material at the start of the year uh, then you add purchases of raw material because that purchases has increased your uh, raw material, the inventory of raw material. And then carriage and merge of raw material, obviously, because you need to bring, if you are paying transportation to bring the raw material to your factory, that's need, that needs to be added, that will increase your cost. You subtract purchases returns of raw materials because uh, those raw materials may be faulty, so you had returned them to the supplier. And then uh, what you do is that basically you get the total raw material here and uh, this one is your total raw material and then what you do is that you subtract closing inventory of raw material so what you find out is your cost of raw materials consumed so basically so basically this is your cost of raw materials consumed okay and then what you do is that you add direct labor so direct labor you can uh, find out in the question they might have given you factory wages but then sometimes they use this word production wages and then sometimes they use uh, factory operatives so by factory operatives they they mean actual uh, workers who are basically uh, in the process of the production in the in the basically in the production line if you can imagine that in a factory and then there's direct expenses. So there are two main direct expenses that are found in the CIE questions path papers. One is royalties, and this is very rare. Basically, you don't find them in every question, but uh, let's say royalties is what, um, let's say there is an original inventor of the product. Someone who originally made the product, um, we are basically copying their recipe, let's say. Let's say it's a food product or something like that, or it's some original product which is made by someone else, invented by someone else. So uh, we are basically paying them royalty per piece because they were the original inventor of the product. There can be packaging costs that can be direct and indirect both, um, uh, depending on the question. So, so there, there are packaging costs which come in direct expenses. And then what you do is that, okay, then basically what uh, you are getting is, that uh, you're uh, adding a cost of raw materials used, plus you add factory wages, and then plus you add the direct expenses. So either it will be royalties or it will be packaging, and some in some questions, there is no direct expense. So uh, you don't have, need to worry about that then. Uh, uh, you just have to worry about raw materials and labor. And then you get the prime cost. So basically when you add all these three, you get the prime cost. And then uh, the next part of it is factory indirect wages, uh, indirect uh, overheads. So what about factory indirect overheads? Factory indirect overheads are those expenses which are not directly traceable to one unit, one thing. And uh, the thing is that um, they are not related to output, like let's say rent of the factory. Rent of the factory can be, it's a fixed number, right? It's a fixed cost. But uh, you know, you can change your level of production every time. So you can't tell, basically you can't look at the product and tell how much rent is there in that specific product. So uh, rent is an indirect, basically indirect factory overhead. And um, uh, you can't trace it to one unit simply. Also rent is a fixed cost. Um, so you need to pay a specific amount of rent, uh, whatever the production that you're doing. So uh, your rent will not um, not directly relate to your uh, output. Uh, then you have production manager salary. So a manager who is basically looking after production, you uh, will give them a per month salary. You will not give them salary according to the number of units that are being produced. Similarly, factory supervisors' salary or factors, factory supervisors' wages are also not directly related to production. The supervisor is looking after production. So someday when, you know, uh, when workers are on a strike and uh, they're not working, they're not producing any output, you can still not stop your supervisor's salary. So basically, it's not related to output. 
uh, rent of factory, I have explained that heat and light of factories and rent, um, electricity bills come out to be different um, every, um, basically depending on the electricity that we've, we've been using. So it's not directly related to how much electricity, basically we can't tell how much electricity is being, uh, is being uh, charged to one output, sorry, one product. And then we have insurance. Insurance again is a very, very uh, indirect expense. Uh, you need to pay, like let's say it's a factory insurance, so you need to pay a fixed amount for factory insurance, whatever output you're producing. That is not, um, that is completely unrelated. Then you have depreciation of factory machinery. Of course, that's a very unrelated. Um, although, you know, you do make output in machinery, but the loss and the value of machinery is basically, uh, you don't know how to how to charge the loss of the value of the asset on a specific unit of output. And then there is a depreciation of factory building, then there is depreciation of factory equipment, then there is depreciation of loose tools. So depreciation of loose tools, interestingly, uh, there is a depreciation chapter in which you study revaluation method is used on loose tools. But the application is basically done in the manufacturing chapter. And uh, you guys, if um, I can also tell you the formula for this, so there's this opening value of loose tools plus purchases of loose tools minus sale of loose tools minus depreciation is equal to closing value of loose tools. This is basically uh, the formula, but basically you need to make uh, depreciation your subject of the formula. So when you make depreciation your subject of the formula, your formula becomes opening value of loose tools plus purchase of loose tools minus sale of loose tools minus closing value of loose tools is equal to depreciation. That is how you calculate um, depreciation on loose tools. So basically you make depreciation of the subject of formula. And you know, this is very, very easy to understand. I mean, it's a very, very easy concept. You have some value of loose tools in the start, then you purchase more. So your loose tool values, loose tool values, value increases. There's normally no sale of loose tools. Normally there is not there in the question. So you guys have to, you know, just ignore it. And depreciation basically is the loss in the value of loose tools. So what you're getting is the closing value of loose tools at the end of the year. So normally if there is no purchases, no sales, so opening minus closing is the depreciation. Opening minus, opening value minus closing value. And uh, then what happens is that you add, basically you add all of these. And um, one more thing, there can be, production manager's salary if they're using the word they can say factory manager's salary so you need to uh, you need to be careful about the terminologies as well and uh, that said they can say uh, indirect um, wages or you know factory supervisor's salary or indirect supervisor's salary so you know they do play with the terminology so you need to be very alert when you are solving this question also one more thing that any office related expenses or any administration related ex expenses or any you know carriage outwards or things like that are very very income statement specific because those are selling and administration expenses office related expenses are also income statement relevant not for manufacturing only factory related expenses should be put in the manufacturing account so what you'll do is now you'll add prime cost and factory indirect overheads and then what you'll get whatever the amount is uh, then what you do is that you add opening inventory of work in progress and you subtract closing inventory of work in progress and one more thing i'll tell you the logic of it as well that you add opening inventory of work in progress because uh, whatever last year was work in progress will be completed first so it becomes part of your cost of production you subtract closing work in progress because it's work in progress it's not finished goods so it's not part of your cost of production you haven't completed the goods so cost of production is basically uh, the the cost of that inventory which has been completed the whole production process has been done on that basically it's uh, it's ready to be sold now the whole production process has been done on that okay the next part of it usually is part b of the uh, of the manufacturing questions you get you get to make an income statement trading section so normally they only ask for the, for the trading section because trading section is slightly different for manufacturing. 
you guys have studied a normal uh, trading section now what you do here is uh, you do revenue less sales returns you get net sales that's the normal thing that you have in, in a normal income statement as well and then you put less cost of sales opening inventory of finished goods so here you should know this that sometimes there are certain manufacturing businesses they might manufacture themselves as well so manufacture make output themselves and then they might you know you know buy uh, buy finished goods from somewhere else and then sell it uh, basically do the marketing for it and then sell it so in Pakistan uh, most clothing stores they have this um, they make clothes themselves and then produce themselves and sell it uh, but there are some accessories they do source it from China and then sell it so basically the the the, uh, the finished goods that are coming from China right and they are being sold here just sold here so that's the thing manufacturing and side by side there is trading as well so opening inventory of finished goods again the inventory of finished goods that you have uh, bought to to you know uh, to sell it then you have add the purchase of finished goods so some per finished goods uh, are being purchased from somewhere so you add that that will increase the inventory of your the cost of your inventory of finished goods and then carriage and goods and finished goods of course you might you know pay some shipping charges to get those finished goods so you add that less purchase re returns of finished goods so you whatever you're returning back to the supplier is not your uh, not part of your cost of sales and then you add cost of production so the cost of production is coming from where the manufacturing accounts so this, this is the cost of production of that output which you've made yourself and um, then what you do is that you subtract closing inventory finished goods because this haven't been sold yet uh, so when you subtract this uh, you get this value this is cost of sales and when when you do net sales minus cost of sales you get gross profit that is how you uh, tackle with the trading section of the income statement when it's uh, when it's when you're doing it for a manufacturing business so i hope this video helps you guys uh, thank you so much for listening